I started realizing that that discomfort or uh, the place where whiteness doesn't have to live is where some of the best stories are told. How to get away with murder, burning the games industry to the ground, is a presentation by our good friends over at Sweet Baby Inc. And you'd think I'd be making that title up because it's so absolutely absurd that there's no way that a game consultancy company would actually do a presentation saying those words. But then again, it's Sweet Baby Inc. So are you really that surprised? What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. And shout out to Kirsch, who brought this to everyone's attention. A presentation from nearly one year ago that discussed the Game Devs of Color Expo talking about what Sweet Baby Inc. really does in the background to games. And this flies directly in the face of everything Kim Belair ever says publicly about how there are all these innocent people just working there, just giving some slight tips and ideas on what might be more inclusive just to make sure people feel safe and comfortable in the games, when in reality, the truth has been exposed with this presentation here, and it's unhinged. <laughs> Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full exhaustive article breaking down every step of this near half hour long presentation trying to corrupt and destroy the very video game industry that we all know and love. How to get away with murder, subverting genre expectations. My name is Cameron Wild, and I'm a narrative designer uh, and sensitivity reader with a company called Sweet Baby Inc. based out of so-called Montreal. These are some of my um, co-workers. In a beyond shocking admission during the Game Devs of Color Expo, a crazed Sweet Baby Inc. employee by the name of Cameron Wild, and what an apt last name that is, who identifies as a non-binary, shocker, revealed a controversial and troubling agenda to quote-unquote burn the games industry to the ground, among many other insane thoughts. The video was titled, How to Get Away with Murder, Subverting Genre Expectations. And first off, what? Uh, we specialize in narrative development, which means working with teams on everything from script writing to narrative direction, casting uh, to cultural consultation. And we do it with a focus on inclusion, but also on creating joy through storytelling. Wild works at Sweet Baby Inc. with the made up job title of quote unquote narrative designer and is a sensitivity reader for Sweet Baby Inc. They've worked together on major titles like the greatly successful Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, and the title that still has not made a profit, Alan Wake 2, and a game that got shut down, The Crew, Motorfest, and even God of War Ragnarok, a game that fell flat on its face when it recently launched on PC this week. And yes, of course, he, I think it's a he, has a nose ring, and companies continue to employ Sweet Baby Inc. And as I go forward here, you're gonna be like, why? What is going on? Who are these people that continually hire this corporation? Because the stories we tell each other are way more than entertainment. They're how we create, debate, and preserve our collective values and beliefs. And we can and should make better, more expansive, more representational content. In the presentation, Wilde made some bold statements about the power of storytelling, claiming that the stories told in video games serve not just as entertainment, but as a means to push debate and reshape collective values. Now, as you all know, Many gamers play video games for, I know it's crazy these days to say it, but an escape from reality and just to blow off some steam and enjoy something that takes you away from reality. Not everything has to be agenda-driven narratives to push propaganda. In fact, it should never be that when it comes to video games. That's why we at Sweet Baby do what we do. Um, but we hit a wall sometimes when it's not just that creatives don't know how to tell a story well, it's that they want to tell a certain story and a certain story that often they're unequipped to tell. This is a little bit more than what CEO Kim Belair seems to let on when she chats about what they do and how they simply just suggest stuff. One of the slides revealed the ultimate goal, burning the games industry to the ground. It's not a vague metaphor. Wild's intent is clear here, signaling an insanely radical approach to changing the video game industry 
by upending the current structure and then reformatting it the way they want it to be. Now do you see why so many people out there are in stark contrast to Sweet Baby Inc. and do not want to see them attached to any games? Could I make it any more clear? But recently I have started realizing that that discomfort or the place where whiteness doesn't have to live is where some of the best stories are told. The talk quickly took a controversial turn when Wilde emphasized their belief that the best stories in gaming are told from a place where, get this, whiteness doesn't have to live. Who talks like that? Like seriously, who has the I wake up in the morning and just hate white people so much that I need to make it my life goal to completely remove their impact from the world every step along the way. Sensitivity reading is also seen as is often seen as reductive and flattening. In the most frustrating cases, I know that I, a black non-binary person, is going to be seen as someone looking to reduce quote unquote offense, basically a buzz killer. They claim that discomfort is essential for telling stories, which, you know, honestly on the surface, I don't disagree with that. But at the same time, their discomfort comes from a racial bias perspective where they just don't like white people, so they feel uncomfortable around them. And I think the definitions here are what matter. When you say a discomforting story or something that makes you uncomfortable could be entertaining, could be interesting, could make you want to play more. It's because it takes you out of your comfort zone and you're interested to find out why it's doing that. Not because it's bringing some sort of impact to your world and making you change dynamically how you feel about the culture and narrative of, of black people and white people. Like what, what are we even doing here? Personally, I think that it's the same thing we see with any non-black creator who thinks that black people are cool, but can't really examine the covetous nature of their feelings or their own role in black stories. People who in life met a black person that they either wanted to follow, fuck, or befriend and never resolved it. Wilde goes on to talk about a bunch of different movies and the tropes between them. He talked about Blazing Saddles and praises Mel Brooks for the comedy in that against white people and talks about how Mel Brooks was smart for employing black people to properly make fun of white people and that's why the film was good but then in stark contrast to that Quentin Tarantino's Django Unchained was not good because the edginess stemmed from white supremacist patriarchal values and Wilde argued that the film and by extension Tarantino's work should be critiqued out of existence. Do you notice a trend with the employees of Sweet Baby Inc. and how they talk? It's not any kind of, oh, let's meet halfway on something and have a conversation. It is a, we need to have this exterminated from reality because it's so bad and we need to replace that with our visions and that's the way the world should look. And as long as everyone just agrees with us, there can be no problems. We don't have to exterminate anyone else. This seems a little weird. In good genre, the identity of your characters, specifically your heroes, has to define their challenges in the narrative, but it also has to define their triumphs. Blazing Saddles does this by allowing Sheriff Bart's unique perspective, hard won by being exactly who he is, to save the day. Wilde's radical vision for the future of the gaming industry continued as he insisted that good genres start with representation on the creative team and that the identity of characters must define both their challenges and triumphs within the narrative. The framework that Wilde is pushing is apparently essential for reshaping the industry and challenging existing power structures in storytelling, which is, well, yeah. Exactly what you'd think it is, an activist infiltrating an industry trying to take over, take power of it, and change the narrative into making people think ideologically just like they do. As one game dev of color to another. The reality is that almost all of us exist and are working on problematic things with problematic people. But 
I genuinely can't get over that someone from Sweet Baby Inc. actually made a presentation about burning the games industry to the ground, not one year ago today. And that kind of approach should make everyone rethink how they look at Sweet Baby Inc. Even if people might think that some YouTubers like myself are going over the top about just how bad they really are for the industry. When you see stuff like this and hear it from their own lips talking about how they want to completely revolutionize gaming, take it over, destroy what was there before and replace it with their own values, you gotta take a step back and be like, I think you guys are going a little too far here. It's a little sketch. Not sure anyone should be hiring you to continue doing what you're doing. You can tell just in the text, uh, but it's also a fact, that Brooks worked with black writers to make sure the jokes came at the expense of whiteness and chipped away at an absurd social hierarchy. It's deliberately and unexpectedly maybe a narrative that contributes to the liberation of people like me. It isn't respectful. Uh, it's offensive. Yeah but it offends the right people. Like it would be one thing if the games they worked on were wildly successful and rampantly selling copies everywhere, but no, the exact opposite has been happening and studios have been closing. Real lives have been impacted negatively because of the influence from Sweet Baby Inc. They are destroying companies. They are ruining lives all in the name of the message. And it should all be okay because we have an ultimate goal that we might lose some jobs along the way. Some people might get laid off. Some companies might close. Some crappy games might get put out there. But we don't care because we're Sweet Baby Inc. And we have a message to push and we will stop at nothing to get it out there. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. If you guys want more information on this insane presentation, check out smashjt.com. I will link the full article and video in the description below. If you guys appreciate what I'm doing, hit that join button. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing. No more premeditation. It's time to do a murder. Smash, 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 smash.